So first of all, I just want to offer my heartfelt thanks to everyone who watched, liked, commented and clicked on my last video, the first I've made since coming out of hospital. The response was absolutely overwhelming and it took me an entire day to reply to every single comment, something that it doesn't normally take me anywhere near that amount of time. To read all these stories of health problems from those subscribers that I've chatted to before and obviously I've known nothing about them other than the plants and also those who've never commented before and said that it was the first time that they'd commented yet were inspired to tell me their stories was not only humbling but also in a way it's kind of like them saying that they stand shoulder to shoulder with me and I find that a really great comfort. I've never experienced anything like that before and I'm truly grateful. So if you haven't watched it and you want to know what it was all about, please go ahead and look it up when you watch this one, of course, and make sure that you read all the comments, which is actually more important, I think, and perhaps add your own story too. So I'm trying to get myself better now. I know from experience, though, that it's not a nice linear path, especially when you can't eat, but I keep trying small amounts and my innards yet are not quite trauma-free enough, I should say, to accept it, so I have to keep going back to liquids. However, on the plus side is that I can actually make more videos and spend more time with my plants and, of course, family when they're not working. So today's video is all about Streptocarpus. Now I know I've recently made a video on that where I went through all the different names and so on, but I want to show you them particularly at the moment because they're looking so amazing right now. In fact, they've never actually looked better, I think. So we're gonna go through the history of what's happened to them over this year and give you hopefully some tips as to why mine are looking so fantastic at the moment. So let's dive in. So as we look at how fabulous they look now, let's go through what's actually happened to them throughout this particular growing season. As you might know, they prefer to stay over 12 degrees Celsius. This I've found is the minimum temperature that they'll actually bloom for me in my situation. I know it might be different in different parts of the world. Because the electricity costs spiralling, I actually reduced my minimum temperatures in the greenhouse last year to 7 degrees. That was about the start of last winter. A lot of these bigger bloom varieties are DS varieties from Dimitris in Ukraine. They seem to be able to come up with varieties that nobody else can. These huge flowered varieties, huge blooms, absolutely glorious colours. I mean, and I've not really scratched the surface. There are so many to choose from. just glorious. I would definitely recommend if you know if you're after a house plant and you want something that's easy to take care of then streptocarpus are your thing. The only difficulty I guess is when it comes to winter and you've got to tidy them up but you don't really need a greenhouse for that. Very very easy to tidy up and I'll put a card up at the end just to show you how I do mine. Really simple, probably done if you've only got one or two plants probably done in about five ten minutes. In a UK winter, that means it was seven degrees in the greenhouse here for 24 hours a day, because obviously the nighttime, uh, the outside temperatures, I should say, were actually less than seven degrees. Now, while streps are fine down to lower temperatures than that, even five degrees Celsius, certainly won't go frosty, that will kill them, uh, but they do go very low, they're not gonna actually bloom at those temperatures. So mine were very slow to get going this year, much slower than when I had them at 12 degrees right the way through the winter. In fact, I reckon it put them back by a full two months. Once the outside temperatures started to increase, they began to slowly come into bloom and produce all those bloom spikes. That would have been around late May time, when usually at least some of these have been blooming since early to late March. However, disaster struck and the entire greenhouse came down with a heavy infestation of mites and thrips. And then aphids. I found with streps that they'll still bloom with mites and thrips, but obviously it knocks them back. The aphids, which actually attack the blooms and the bloom spikes rather than the leaves, I think have a more detrimental effect. I sprayed them all, same spray, doesn't really matter, but even the spray itself completely kills off the blooms, especially if it's systemic, and it will knock them back, and it knocked mine back yet again. Now, believe it or not, these blooms here are from the same plant, so you can see the difference there. So this that I've got in my hand here is exactly the same plant as this one. Look at the difference. 
Now, why is that? Well, they can do this. They can do this anyway, but I found that spraying with systemics creates these mutations. Now, whether that's a mutation or whether that's just a naturally occurring difference, I really don't know. Impossible to know. Pull that one off. But you can see, can't you? You wouldn't think that they were the same plant, but it's a beautiful plant regardless. Absolutely gorgeous bloom. So this takes us into August when I was away on holiday for a couple of weeks, during which they weren't deadheaded at all, which obviously that will slow them down. And then they were drowned. So it's a wonder that they're still alive after all of this. Following on from that, we had temperatures unheard of in this country since records began. It was actually 38 degrees Celsius on a few of those days. I've never experienced anything like that in this country. And streps don't really like to be over roughly 25 degrees Celsius, so they didn't like that either. Again, they survived, but clearly they wouldn't thrive in those conditions. So after all that, we get into September and October, and finally they're bug free. They're enjoying the reasonably warm days. It's about 22, 23 in here at the moment, and coping with the chilly nights, which does bring it down to the minimum temperature that I've set. And they're looking absolutely incredible, better than they've ever looked in any year that I've been growing them. So why is that? Well, I can only speculate. My care for them has been the same as always, except while I've fed them in previous years, it's always been sporadic. I very often used to get yellow leaves on the plants, not just one, like a lot of yellow leaves on the plant. And I just put that down to the natural decline into winter before they go into like a semi-dormant situation. But this year I stuck rigidly to the recommendation from Dibley's, which is a specialist streptocarpus grower uh, and seller and hybridizer in Wales. So I use the proprietary fertilizer tablets. I've shown them before, a little tiny tub of fertilizer tablets. I bought quite a few of the tubs, they're only cheap, and they recommended putting one in there every single month, one a month for like a 12 centimeter pot. So on this occasion, I have, and I think this is the reason why they've flowered so profusely at a time when they're normally on a slow decline towards the end of the year. So what's my current conditions? Well, we're Already said, seven degrees minimum at night. During the day, we're still getting the mid-teens. Sometimes on a sunny day like today, it's going into the early 20s. So there is that differential. Humidity is generally medium to high. They get no direct sun now, even though the sun's out, they're behind the uh, shading from the garage. I always give them as much light that I can give them. In my case, it's from the grow light. If you live in the UK or somewhere with similar conditions to me, give them as much light as you can. Don't believe the myth about being shade loving. This is an entirely subjective thing. If you live somewhere in Florida, then go ahead and give them shade. Your shade is not gonna be like my shade, believe me. That in itself illustrates how difficult it is to give Kerr recommendations because it's so subjective. But if they're not blooming, firstly, feed them, but secondly, give them a bit more light. I dead head frequently. I always cut the stalks down as low as I can, but I don't get too worried about it if I can't reach them, so long as that seed head has been cut off. I always clear away all the dead stalks at the end of the year. I do expect them to keep blooming like this for a couple of months yet. Might even still be in bloom by Christmas, but by then I prefer to force them into having a little rest. So when I say dormant, they're not really dormant, they're just not really growing. So I would pull out all the dead bits and tidy up the rosettes, maybe divide them, maybe repot them and so on. So this one is falling stars. I think on the last video I did mention that this one does look spectacular when it's doing its thing and it's absolutely covered in blooms. The blooms themselves I don't think are that nice, certainly if you've only got a little bunch of them, but when you've got so many I can see where the falling stars name comes from. So tell me in the comments if you grow Streptocarpus and how yours are looking. Did I cover everything there? Always great to hear from people. Put your questions in the comments. And if yours are ready for a tidy up, here's what I generally do with mine. It might help. See you on the next one. Bye.